Sorry about that, YouTube. I just uploaded a real crappy video. Have you ever done that? <laughs> well, I didn't realize it that when I was manipulating with my phone, messing with it, before I was filming, I'd switched my resolution to QVGA uh, for the front side of my phone. And so when I switched back to it, it still had that resolution. And so you had some pretty cruddy images of what I was explaining. So this is uh, part two. And as you can see, everything I said before is the same. This is how they are manipulating your weather using high energy NEXTRAD or Doppler radar, as they say. They say they are tracking your weather. They are not tracking your weather. They are manipulating your weather. And again, I like to emphasize, the Bible says in Revelations that the Antichrist will have the power to, to shut up the rain from falling on the earth. So it's not about making the rain. Okay, Even though they do manipulate the weather and storms occur and uh, I just want you to look and see and if you didn't watch my first one this is sea two shining sea we got two storms here the one that caused our May 3rd snowstorm here in Iowa this is where I'm at now I went to check this out because I wanted to go outside and have a smoke and looking for the weather saw some flashes out there but all these little bubbles here are all next rad stations these I think are mobile ones these ones in here because I know where the ones for this state are. This one might be for the for these states here, but uh, these are all your Doppler radars that are sending out high energy, not because they really want to look really deep into the storm. It's because they want to cook the atmosphere and all the particles that they spray out into the atmosphere with the chemtrails. Okay, and then they use these radars to excite the molecules to either cause it to literally evaporate before you depending on the frequency and the waves that they set okay uh, they can move the storms uh, make them fizzle out right in a second in a nanosecond I'm telling you all right and they, depending on how much they crank it up and if you're a pilot and you fly through this okay layer of microwave energy it's not good for you when you're taking off and you're landing if you get two minutes of exposure uh, your brain patterns are going to be disrupted for several hours afterwards, okay? Your cognitive abilities to control your aircraft will be impaired. Not might be, will be. Okay, and that's just for the level of a cell phone exposure, okay? So if you use your cell phone before takeoff, your brain's been disrupted by the microwave going through your brain. Okay, it disrupts your brain patterns. Um, as it disrupts the atmosphere, don't you think it'll disrupt your brain? Okay. And no, that's not what's happening with me here, because I know exactly what I'm talking about. I've been studying this for years. I've got terabytes of information, years going back here in Iowa, of geoengineering and weather modification. Okay. But this is now, in the last, I would say, year, has rolled out nationwide as a full-on effort. They're not trying to hide it anymore. When you see those planes spraying from horizon to horizon, leaving that type of material. Then the other ones with the shorter tails. That's why I don't debate the short tail, long tail, contrail, chemtrail. Now it is full on scale. In fact, uh, Henning Kemner had a video up of this passenger that experienced a flight from, uh, uh, I think it was flying from Asia and then th through up into Europe. And during that flight, it's a really long flight, and during that flight, yeah, uh, the stewardesses ordered all the uh, passengers to close their windows. And he th thought that was uh, unusual. Now, you're encouraged to close your window for your neighbor if they want it closed. But they never order you to close your windows. Why? And you're flying over an ocean. And, uh, well, people closed their windows, followed the orders. The stewardesses even went by to make sure every window was closed, much like you would to fasten your seatbelt when landing. Well, this one passenger actually decided to open up the window, and what he saw was amazing. And he said he saw nothing but these huge, thick trails. Now, not just below him. Now, I want you to understand what he saw was the layering that they do. Okay, what we see here on the ground is just the initial spray patterns that form the initial clouds, the overcast, and milky white skies. But after they get that cloud, now at the same time they are building an upper layer deck and a lower layer deck, and they layer your atmosphere. Once they get it clouded up, well, I'm telling you, they're going out there and dumping huge, uh, uh, it's a three-dimensional pattern. So 
it's going to grow, and you would see trails at multiple levels. If you were to fly up there as a, as a pilot or as a passenger, you should pay attention. Bring, bring your camera and film. You know, have one of these little handy cams handy, okay? That way they can't tell you to turn it off. Point it out the window. Even look at what your own engines might be spraying out, because I understand you use commercial aircraft as well. They put it in the fuel, depending on what their desire or need is. Okay, and chemtrails, they have a variety of applications, okay? That's why they use it and, and use aircraft to spray stuff in the atmosphere. The Air Force is very interested in controlling all the skies of the whole world, okay? Now, the UN treaties say that we can't use this on each other, so we use it on ourselves. And we have this agreement that each country uses it on themselves in a way that we all see fit, right? Mm -hmm. That way we keep honesty in the system. We certainly wouldn't hurt our own citizens, would we? Tell that to the pilots who got to fly through this. And what about the pilots who got to stay up there and do this and how much radiation they're being exposed to from Fukushima? All right? 200,000 rems each flight. You guys are going to be getting cancer here pretty soon. And uh, another thing I want to add uh, to the Japanese, uh, you guys really need to clean up that Fukushima really quick. I understand, you know, the Western powers is what they did to you. But I'll tell you what, I'll trade you Washington, D.C., for Fukushima Prefecture. You put that sucker a thousand feet underneath the sea, uh, you can push our Washington, D.C. off into the ocean, okay? You do whatever you want to, I don't care. All right? As long as you take care of Fukushima, you nuke it. All right? That's the only way you're going to take care of that plant. There is no other way. You're not going to case anything in concrete, tell that to the people that operated Chernobyl. Otherwise, you're just going to kill everybody in the Northern Hemisphere eventually. All right? including yourselves. So if you want to commit Harry Carey, please do it by yourself. All right. Now there's other places that you and Japanese could go to and it would be willing to help you relocate. You have a terrible situation there. But if you're going to be any type of human being, then you'd realize what you're doing to the rest of us. I understand that you have your ill wills towards us. Understood. All right. But there, you are affecting a heck of a lot more people that, that didn't hurt you at all. So, uh, um, please keep that in mind. That when you're dealing with this thing in Fukushima, you know, this is what we're doing to ourselves. And I know that geoengineering is happening all over the planet, and this is how they do it. You got next red towers in your state, which you do, every state does. Those big white balls that you see out in the, ours is out in the middle by Sailorville Lake. It's a Kind of away from dense population, but there are some really nice homes around there. So I wouldn't want to live around one of those things at all. Okay. Cell phone towers are bad enough. Cell phones are really bad. Here, I'm talking right next to one. Uh, but uh, this is a good catch by me. got to stay up at, sometimes at night to catch these type of returns. Because they really happen at night. Weathermen will tell you they're just false echoes. These are not false echoes. Okay, not unless they got the power turned up. And hey, coincidentally, it's storming. Huh? And here's a storm, and here's a storm. They're trying to create these monster storms and make it rain where they want, how they want, or rain, not rain at all. Okay, this is here training. This severe storm. There's some. That's a that's a big wall, monstrous wall, cloud stretching for how many miles? Do you think that is? 150, 200 miles. Tornadoes all along that thing. And it's hooking around even like that. You see how the lines are created here? On my other video, I might even delete it, so I might as well go ahead and show you the satellite. Well, I'll go ahead and click here. It's just gonna, I'm going to have to go out to... Pardon my clicking around here. Uh, zoom out to region. See the moisture contents here. Dense moisture here. Zoom out to nation. Now I want you to watch how the actual the moisture evaporates. Okay. What do you think? Uh, microwave does the water model water model molecules. Excuse me. It evaporates and doesn't excite them. That's what a microwave oven does to anything in it. Any water molecule. See how dense it is? And then the next red lights up and look what, hap look what happens to it. 
This is still twisting around. They want to disintegrate this to move this. Okay. Poof. Gone. Dense moisture. Poof. Spreads it out. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> see that there? We go back to what I was showing you with the satellite with the next rat. And that's what it intends to do. And this is all chemical, by the way. Chemtrails is all sprayed from sea to shining sea. Canada up here. It's getting some dousing. Got a flow coming in from the Pacific. Alright, you notice there's no moisture. Why isn't it raining out here with all this whole jet? Okay, no rain. You got a little bit of spotty shower in there at the tops there, but don't get rain until you get way into Mexico. Okay, you know, the Bible talks about a person that is, you know, a fool is like a cloud that produces no rain, you know. That's what it's a bunch of clouds that are producing no rain, but poof, that's the power of it, cause it not to rain on the earth, and with that power is what they use to create the storms, it's kind of like a reverse psychology, okay but that's the only way they can get it to work they tried cloud seeding and all that back in the Vietnam days, that didn't work out too well, okay they can't control it like they can do it with this alright send the moisture their way and then hit it with this directed energy weapons okay these are weapons and the American government is using it on you the American people okay keep this all in mind when your house gets blown away by a tornado or flooded out it's not mother nature it is man-made global warming is man-made by geoengineering not by co2 emissions or manufacturing except for them that want the rain on their corporate farms or you know corporate factories okay that's what global warming is. So they make you feel bad. So you'll reach deep, deep, deep into your pocketbooks and take their hand. Okay. And give them all your money. Okay. And give them all the power. So they can keep doing Whether it's power. Think about that. Cause it not to rain. Think what a drought would do. We had two years of drought. Farmers lost a lot of money. And made some, made some money that had futures. Those that aren't real farmers, right? The ones that are sitting in a uh, office somewhere doing future trades. Those aren't real farmers. Those are speculators. And that's how they do it. To cause drought, hey, cause commodity prices to go up, make a bunch of money. You could do that if you know about geoengineering and the forecast or the models when they plan to make rain and not. Okay, cause drought or whatever they need to do. If you had that type of inside information, imagine what you could do with commodities, especially your food. Now imagine if you're Monsanto, and you control the seed, and now you control the rain, and you control people and their appetites. Remember, you starve in 30 days and die of thirst in 7. So like I said, they cause it not to rain. Okay, well, we had our wells drying up here. We had to have our fire departments fill up tanks to go to people's wells out on farms where there's usually ponds and stuff and fill up their wells. Yeah, and it cost them 250 bucks a trip. That's what we just went through where our two and a half year drought where we got no snow, no rain. So, I think I made this video long enough. Uh, so, uh, I can just hear it on my roof now. The heavy raindrops of the severe thunderstorm, so I guess I missed my cigarette opportunity, because I don't smoke in my house. Uh, so, we don't want no, no smoke in here. Got a baby, you know. I have a love-hate relationship with that habit. Here I complain about chemtrails and stuff, and I light ciggies, but hey, it's my choice. This is not. Okay. Uh, if, they, it, it, if there's reasons for them to do this that are legitimate, and they need to fully inform the public. If they do not, they don't have our consent. And it's unconstitutional. It's unlawful. It's against the Nuremberg Treaties. It's against UN Charter Treaties. It's against anything that is human. Okay? This should not be allowed under any circumstance. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because they're causing something that's going to that has, I'm not saying got it, has now resulted in a runaway effect. They cannot undo this without a severe backlash from 
Mother Nature or the planet resetting itself. So now they're in like Flynn. All right, now I'm all for letting the planet just snap back. It's going to be severe, and you're going to have storms everywhere. You're going to have ice ages in places where there's not ice ages. You're going to have storms where there shouldn't be storms and droughts, and and it's going to last for a few years before the planet fully gets rid of all this stuff in the atmosphere. All right. Uh, and I know people say, well, volcanoes erupt all the time. Yeah, they, yeah. what if you could use harp or something and cause a, an eruption like in Iceland? Hmm? Or volcanoes anywhere. They could also use that ash and particulates to affect the weather and weather patterns or flight patterns. <laughs> what happened in Iceland? And it got dosed in the UK, right? Wow. So, a lot of information in there. I hope I'm not talking too fast for you. Hope you enjoy these. I know uh, right now my view counts are uh, all right. I've been seeing zero on some and then 30 on other apps that I'm using for YouTube. So I don't know what's going on with my view counts there. If you want to subscribe, I recommend people to bookmark my site, not subscribe. That's why you see my subscriber count low. If you want to subscribe, fine. But I'm just not in for YouTube and tracking. All right. Um, I subscribe to a bunch of people. Okay. Uh, uh, but that's for my multi-layered technology, all well, my multiple devices, devices, so I can watch what I want, when I want, how I want. That's why I don't have cable. I use an antenna. We have 12 channels over the air, and I use Netflix and a big collection of movies. I got more net down here everywhere. There's my little computer. There's my PS3. There's my karaoke. Uh, here's my paper jam guitars. I know it's probably kind of dark here. But these things are pretty awesome. They actually are real guitars. Paper jams. Check them out. Paperjams.com, I'm pretty sure. Well, you can order them there. You can connect them up to your computer and download different sounds. But, again, wanted to point that out. There's a satellite map. The radar images were the best, though. Let's see if I can get back there for you really quick. And what map it'll take you to really quick here is, uh, here we go, of the region. But that's a really a close-up. Okay. Let me just go ahead and hit play on this close-up so you can get a good idea of what I mean, that these are not false echoes or things of that nature. Sorry about, I'm now holding my camera. I had it on a tripod there, but. That's like a close-up. And I can tell you. Call up Birmingham and ask them if it's really raining there. Okay. It's raining here. But I don't think it's raining there. Okay. Looks like it. But that's them cooking the atmosphere. Uh, zoom out to region. And... This might actually do a good play because it's a little zoomed in. To zoom out. Let's see, as you, you zoomed in there, you can see the circles of the next rad stations. And now it's updating. You can see the ones popping off and on. They are actually going off and on. Powering up and powering down really quick, sending bursts of energy this way into my storm, into my neighborhood. See how it intensifies? Watch this pop on. Over here, watch that get bigger. See that? Do 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 boo. See that? Cook it. Okay. Look at that one down here. All right, that's so going into Oklahoma. Sure, there's some tornadoes and hook echoes in there. And that's next red radar. Okay. I oh, see the bands coming out over here. Check that out. Mm. Those are the actual beams when they circle around and they send them out that way. They also manipulate the speed in which 